AMD not giving up. PlayStation 5 VR controllers got revealed and we have some new details on potentially the next GPU launch from AMD, which I mean, uh, why do we need another one right now? Anyways, let's get into the hot news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're going to get into the hottest tech news that I can find across the internet, starting off with the top story today, being that AMD is announcing that they are not giving up on their DLSS competitor, which is just a fancy way of upscaling the video games that your eyes are seeing so that it doesn't look so bad when you blow it up properly. We also got it revealed that they're going to be calling it Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR for short, and it essentially means that it's for sure coming out. At least that's according to Scott Herkelman in the interview that he gave with PC World saying that they should be working on multiple different methods to figure out how to do it because it doesn't actually need machine learning to do it and you can do it in different ways and they're evaluating many different ways, which doesn't necessarily bode well that they are going to get it out this year. If they're saying that they're testing so many different ways and they don't quite know which way they're going with it, it's already March, like I'd figure you would have a trajectory already. I'm not a software engineer and have no idea how to figure this out. It just doesn't bode well from a project management standpoint, at least in my opinion. I could be totally wrong, but it also doesn't necessarily give me hope that this would be better than NVIDIA's DLSS, which is hardware and software based and actually re relies on machine learning quite heavily. And we can also see that based on the RX 6000 series of GPUs that AMD's attempts at ray tracing aren't quite as good as NVIDIA's. So are we really expecting much out of for sure? Let me know, are you waiting for FSR down below in the comments? I want to hear from you there. And I don't want to hear that you've been having back pain because you've not been stretching enough because we have today's sponsored Chirp to help with that, whether it be this large wheel right here, which can relieve your back or as well as the medium and deep tissue sizes that get to the back pain and relief that you might need because the Chirp wheel has a unique four-way stretch with a spinal canal that makes it so that you get some of the best back stretching in your life. It's built to stand up to 500 pounds and it's FSA and HSA approved and it's an FDA registered class one medical device and you can get it for a 60 day trial when you check it out. This is the only thing that I use every day. Just hop on the chirp wheel, stretch out my back, use deep tissue in the chair. If I've been sitting in it too long, it's great. My wife and I use it. I love it absolutely so much and a lot of you guys have as well. This has been one of like our most popular sponsors that we've ever had, which is crazy. So check out chirp at the link in the video description in case you want some of that back pain relief relief, my friends. And we want some relief from DDR4. Thankfully, there is a new post that came out showing that the new Van Gogh APUs coming out from AMD will have quad channel DDR5 memory support, at least according to bootlog information showing off this information. Obviously, we don't even have the Zen 3 APUs right now that are still on DDR4. So expecting the Van Gogh ones to show up anytime soon is the foolhardy, but DDR5 is coming. And we've also got new companies launching DDR5 with Longsys announcing their DDR5 and publishing their test data with their 32 gigabyte sticks to show just how good they are. And how good is NVIDIA? Very good at GeForce Now. I actually think it's one of my favorite cloud streaming services and they're doubling the price to $10 a month, which I still say, is pretty worth it. It's gonna be $100 a year if you wanna pay annually, but they're also rolling out new server infrastructure. They're opening one up in Phoenix as well as Canada, and then they're gonna be opening up a couple more in Saudi Arabia and Australia. $10 a month to get access to RTX hardware and then being able to play PC games on a high-end PC, even if you don't have one. GeForce Now always makes a lot of sense to me. 10 bucks a month, still a pretty good okay deal. But let's talk about pricing a Bitcoin GameStop. Bitcoin coming in at 57 and a half thousand dollars. This had a wild ride. It went up and almost broke 60 again. And then it just decided that it didn't want to go there. It just, it wasn't happening. Moon day is not today. GameStop also not having a moon day. It was down 4% and it's up half a percent in after hours trading. It's not mooning. It's not cresting. It's not, the head is not breaching with GameStop just yet, but supposedly, according to the things I read on Wall Street Bets, something might be happening tomorrow with like the closing of calls and stuff like that. Well, we'll see on Monday. I'll give you another Bitcoin Games Up update later. Now we have an update to Stadia. Terraria, which was supposed to come out on Stadia and then wasn't supposed to come out on Stadia, is now out on Stadia. You're welcome. EA Play should now be out on Xbox Game Pass for PC, so you get access to a whole bunch of EA games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Need for Speed, and a bunch of others. And a bunch of cores is what Intel might be cramming into their Ice Lake server processors, with HP accidentally publishing a list of processors that have up to 40 cores on a single chip 
chip. It's not quite where AMD is with Epic at 64 cores on a single chip, but it is an improvement. And Cherry looking to improve the mobile laptop mechanical keyboard situation with the MX Ultra low profile key switches. It has a reduced height of three and a half millimeters. This ultra low profile is 70% smaller than the previous low profile. It has like a scissor switch design, as you can see right there. It's not quite, but it has a whole bunch of technology going into it and it's going straight into Alienware laptops. You want the best low profile key switches? Aliens. And Microsoft seems to treat HDR like an alien technology. It doesn't know how to do it. And supposedly they're releasing a new technology called Auto HDR on Windows 10 for DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 games. We'll see. I don't know. The, the HDR that I've experienced on Windows does not give me confidence. Maybe that's why they're releasing this and this should be better. I've heard some good things. I'll trust when I see it that it's actually worked out on my system. And that's how I feel about PlayStation VR. I won't trust the headset until it comes out because PSVR Gen 1 sucked. But now we have some updates on PSVR Gen 2 controllers, which actually give us some hints at what the headset could potentially be like, likely going to have inside out tracking. But the controllers are going to have adaptive triggers, which is one of the best features on the DualSense controller, as well as haptic feedback, finger touch detection, tracking from the headset instead of from the, a camera like the previous PS. VR. So this is an improvement in all manner of ways. You're going to have a lot more customizability with these controllers. How well they actually work with the headset remains to be seen, but I'm actually bullish on PSVR. I want to see what they're going to come out with. And I also want to see this game for Spoken, which is the new name for what was known as Project Athea from Square Enix going to be released in the future. I definitely want to check it out for Spoken. And anybody who thought Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis was going to be a great mobile game for Spoken too soon, because it has been revealed that it's going to be a gacha game system, which essentially means loot boxes, loot boxes everywhere and AMD's everywhere, which is why it's now being reported that they are likely going to become TSMC's second largest customer, surpassing NVIDIA, partially because NVIDIA is not really customering with them purchasing from them for their Ampere generation, but this would put AMD directly behind Apple when it comes to TSMC's purchases and make it so that they have more leverage over using the foundry for getting their stuff done, which might be this next GPU that we've hearing about through the rumor mill, Navi 23 with 2048 stream processors and eight gigabytes of memory that has been teased out, supposedly going to be premium 1080p gaming, hopefully for like $150. I swear if it's not, ah, I'm so tired of having the 580 at like the 199, 249 price point. I mean, this is irrelevant because it's not going to be in stock and it's not going to be priced well at all because of the current, you know, shortages that are going on. But just can we get a complete overhaul at the low end? Just make it affordable or make it so much better than the 580 that the 580 dies. Just please, AMD, could you do that for me? Navi 23 might be coming out in April, according to this rumor, which it shouldn't they should figure out the rest of the crap first and just keep feeding us 580s forever and ever. And you don't have to stay here forever and ever. Why don't you check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right here. You can check out this playlist down here, which contains all of the episodes you may have missed of the hottest tech news on the internet, my friends. I've been Brett, your host. It's been very hot in here. Hot news, goodbye.